Taylorism. It is sometimes argued that Taylorism has made the most lasting contribution to American thought since the Federalist Papers. Taylorism, you might ask? Chances are you live and work by it. <laughs> Tonight, the extraordinary impact of Frederick Winslow Taylor. At the turn of the century, when the Industrial Revolution hit its stride and was beginning to change everything, Frederick Winslow Taylor became convinced that one machine could turn America into an economic powerhouse, the stopwatch. Frederick Taylor was the first efficiency expert. Uh, he came into the factories of the industrial Northeast and changed them. Machines had already changed the mills of the 19th century, but the workers who ran them clung to the old ways of doing things. Trades were learned literally from watching another laborer. Workers were paid for piecework and were loath to work any faster, lest bosses lower the rate. Frederick Taylor thought the system was ridiculously inefficient. He was the first person to come along and say, we can treat work as a science just as we can anything else. We can analyze it, we can tear it apart, and we can reconstruct it in a new, more efficient way. Taylor was born into Philadelphia's Quaker aristocracy. He was born rich. His father never worked a day in his life. Taylor was accepted by Harvard, but he did not go. Instead, he learned about factories how to read mechanical drawings, how to be a machinist. He became a consultant for America's steel industry when he convinced the mill owners that he could speed up production. They worked, and Taylor watched. And he timed, he timed everything. Every job was broken up into tasks, each task timed with an eye to efficiency. Taylor determined that coal shovelers were most efficient lifting exactly 21 and a half pounds. Then he designed the perfect, most efficient shovel and a schedule of how many lifts each worker should do every minute, every hour, when they should rest. Productivity soared. The workers hated it. He deprived workers of control over the workplace, over their tools, and over their use of their bodies. Taylor couldn't understand the animosity. He thought surely that more productivity would lead to happier workers who were better paid. By 1911, when he published his Principles of Scientific Management, the enthusiasm for Taylor's ideas had grown. In its division of labor and insistence upon speed, Henry Ford's assembly line followed Taylor's principles. Before long, Taylorism was felt everywhere. How to type faster how to perform surgery faster. By the 1930s, Taylor's ideas of efficiency were even making themselves felt in the family kitchen. An efficiently planned kitchen frees the housewife from fatigue. But organized labor was never happy with Taylor. Even Hollywood was wondering where it might all lead. Taylor's one best way of doing things, organized efficiency, became central to the conduct of business in the 20th century. You can see it today on the assembly lines which produce our cars, our computers, our cheeseburgers, even our coffee. New gurus have appeared in the managerial field, but none of them has had the influence of Frederick W. Taylor. That would have pleased Taylor. He never knew the full extent of his influence. He became ill and died in 1915 at the age of 59. It is said that the last thing he did before he died was wind his watch.